Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. We are celebrating Valentine's Day today. Let me get this piece of parchment paper into this eight by eight Pyrex dish. The way we are celebrating Valentine's Day today is we are making some candies and cookies to package up to go love bomb some of my friends and family around town. Now, I love Valentine's Day. I grew up with my parents really just enjoying Valentine's Day. It wasn't necessarily a romantic love type of day. It was the day that my dad always gave us flowers or candy or we had a special meal or whatever it was. And it was just a good day to hang out together and enjoy loving on each other. So I love Valentine's Day. So what we're going to do is we are going to share the love with some friends and family by making them cookies and candies. Now the first cookie recipe we are going to make today is a nugget recipe. This is really an easy one. We're going to put equal parts marshmallow and white chocolate chips in a heat safe bowl. You can do this in the microwave or you can do this in a double boiler on the stove. We need 16 ounces of marshmallows which is one pound. So we're using a scale here just so that I can make sure I get equal parts. That is close enough. Now we need one pound of white chocolate. I will link all the recipes we are going to be making down in the description box. I'm going to melt my nugget with a double boiler today so that we can chop up the additives we're gonna add in here. So we just have a bowl with some water. I'm gonna turn this on and let this start to melt. While that's melting, we are gonna prep some of the additives we're gonna put into our nugget to make it look like Valentine's Day. You can kind of make this recipe into a Christmas uh, recipe by adding red and green. Today we're just gonna add red dots. We're gonna, you can use dots or CGBs or gumdrops. I could only find dots in my grocery store, so that's what we're going to use today. You could make it St. Patrick's Day by just adding the green if you wanted. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pick out all of the red and pink gumdrops. We need a cup and a half of them, which now that I'm looking at this, I don't think I have quite enough since I am picking through the colors. If I had used all of the colors, I would have plenty, but we'll just use what we have. And some of the other recipes we're gonna be making, we're making four different recipes today for sure. We might do a bonus one depending on how much time allows. I always think I can get more done than I actually can get done. So the other couple recipes we're gonna be making are honeycomb, which is also known as sea foam on the Oregon coast. If you go into any candy shop or chocolate shop on the Oregon coast, you can get what's called sea foam. And in other parts of the country or world, they call it honeycomb. And that's my dad's favorite, and it was my dad's mom's favorite, so my grandma's favorite. So when we were younger, every single year we would go to the coast, we would stop into a candy shop and order my grandma a pound of sea foam, and we would actually mail it to her. And so I wanted to make that for my dad. And then some of my other, I think Josh's family has probably never tried it before, so I want to make it for some of them and gift it. We're gonna love bomb them. I was in Ross and I found these cute little Valentine's Day storage boxes. So we are going to fill these up with the different recipes we're making. And tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go love bomb them and I'm gonna go all around town and I'm gonna drop these candy boxes on my friends and family's front porch as just a way to show my love to them. We're also gonna make peppermint patties that we're going to make Valentine's Day festive. And then we are gonna make a soft and chewy sugar cookie that we are going to decorate for Valentine's Day as well. So it looks really weird at first as it starts to melt, but then the white chocolate and the marshmallows and butter start to kind of become a cohesive mass. 
So we're getting pretty close to this being done, but we do want to make sure it's fully mixed together. While this is melting, I'm working on getting the next recipe going. I've got another nine or eight by eight baking dish with a piece of parchment paper. I don't think an eight by eight will be enough for everybody to taste it, but I want to be able to taste it. So I'm gonna get out a nine by 13. I added just a little too much oil, so I'm just going to take a paper towel. There we go. Now we have two of our dishes ready for us. And in that amount of time, our nugget has completely melted. I'm going to stir this until it's all incorporated evenly and we have a homogeneous mass. And that looks perfect. So I'm going to take this off the heat. I need that to cool for two minutes before we can add our candies. So this is cooled just a little bit. You don't want to put your candies in there if it's too hot because you could melt them. I'm gonna put a little bit of spray little parchment paper with a little spray. In less than 10 minutes, we already have one of our candies done. This is so easy, it's extremely sweet, but the cool thing is you can really make this for any holiday just depending on what colors you add into it. So we're gonna set this aside. This needs to cool for a couple hours before we can cut into it. That's why I wanted to get that one going first and why I'm gonna get the next one going next, which is the honeycomb. I can use the same pot to make the honeycomb. I'm just gonna dump this water out. I've changed my mind. Because I'm doubling this recipe, I'm gonna get out my big Dutch oven. You'll know why I need a bigger pot when we add the magic ingredient to this. We need to add back or add to our pot one and a half cups of water. It's been years since I've made this, years. I used to make candy all the time when I was in high school, and I was probably, well maybe I was in college when I made this, so it's been a long time. So I just added one and a half cup, oh, that's wrong. We've already, we've already done it wrong. We need three-fourths cup of water. No, we need one and a half cups of water because we're doubling it. I was right the first time. So what I'm gonna do, because I am doubling this recipe, I'm gonna take a second once I put this water in here and I'm gonna actually write the doubled amount on the side of my recipe so that I'm not trying to do math halfway through adding all the ingredients. That's how I end up messing up when I double recipes. To my one and a half cups of water, I'm gonna add three cups of sugar. quarter cup of honey, and then I just added a half cup of light corn syrup. Now we're going to take this and get it on the stove to cook. We have one more ingredient we need to measure out while this starts to come up to a boil. The last and secret ingredient to honeycomb is baking soda, and I, you'll know why when we add it, it completely transforms the candy. So we need two tablespoons of baking soda. I want to make sure there's no lumps in it. So I'm going to run it through this little sift. See how there's all those lumps? And we're going to get all those lumps. So when we add it to our candy, 
we aren't gonna have, no one's gonna bite into a big chunk of baking soda. So we're gonna set this aside until our candy reaches 300 degrees. So this is gonna take a few minutes to come up to a boil to 300 degrees. When you're making caramels or anything where you're boiling sugar, you don't wanna stir it a bunch because you don't want any of the crystals, the sugar crystals on the side to crystallize your caramel. Our sugar, honey, corn syrup, and water have all dissolved and mixed together. So what I'm gonna do is wipe down the sides one more time just to make sure there's no sugar crystals sitting up on the sides of our pot. And then I'm gonna stop stirring it because I don't want the contents to touch any sugar crystals that might be up there and cause our candy to crystallize. Now I have a candy thermometer and we are gonna set this on the side here. And we're gonna let this just cook away. It's gonna take a while to get up to 300. We want it between 305 and 310 degrees. It always takes longer for candy to come up to a boil than I anticipate. So while that's coming up to a boil, we are gonna get going on our peppermint patty filling. So we need condensed milk, peppermint extract, powdered sugar. Oh wow. It's already in a boil. I spoke way too soon, but we are only at 225 degrees. So we've got a while more to go. Now we have it at a nice simmer. I'm just gonna let this go while we make up our peppermint filling. Our peppermint filling is so easy and it makes it even easier if you use a mixer. Josh loves peppermint patties. We're gonna start with one cup of sweetened condensed milk. So we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of peppermint extract and five to five and a half cups of powdered sugar. My powdered sugar is pretty lumpy so I'm gonna take the time to run it through a sieve. Because you want your peppermint patties nice and soft on the inside. This is one of these recipes that you could make at Christmas, at Easter, at Thanksgiving, a birthday party, Valentine's Day, whatever you want. It just it depends on if you want to decorate it different. And I've got a couple different things in mind. I went to Michael's yesterday and bought some different sprinkles and I haven't fully decided how I want to decorate everything that we're making today. So we'll figure it out together how we're going to decorate these peppermint patties. You could just leave them totally plain too. They're delicious enough to leave plain, but I think I'm going to festive them up just a little bit for Valentine's Day. You can see how lumpy my powdered sugar is. I'm not one that usually likes to sift things because it's tedious, but it's definitely worth it for this recipe because you don't want all those lumps. It's gonna mess up the texture of your patty. And you can see now down here how nice and fine our powdered sugar is. Our sugar is still at 210 degrees, so we've got a while before we're ready for the next step. But I wanted to talk about Valentine's Day for a second. I know Valentine's Day can be kind of a controversial holiday because it can be perceived as a Hallmark holiday or we should show love to our friends and family every day of the year. And I totally agree with that. But I still love Valentine's Day. I think it's a fun excuse to do something a little bit more special for the ones we love. And if you've never been a fan of Valentine's Day because it's always kind of in your mind been for romantic love only, maybe this year make a batch of cookies and bring into your, for your coworkers some Valentine's Day treats. Or try to make it feel special for someone who might not have you know, a romantic love or a special other or something like that. Because it, to me, and this is just my thoughts, is that it's just an extra fun excuse to show love to the ones we love. And so that's what I'm doing. 
Josh, guess what I'm making right here? It smells like the peppermint mints. I I make well, it, yes, I'm making York peppermint patties. Oh. Yeah. That's too good. Josh loves peppermint and chocolate together. Just spilled all over. My mixture is a little bit on the dry side. I have more of my milk here. I'm gonna add a little bit more to that. This is one of those things, it's all about the texture because your powdered sugar, the humidity could be, could affect it. There's just so many different factors. So we just want it to be kind of like a Play-Doh texture. Yeah, that's looking better. I got the exact texture I want on this peppermint. I'm gonna clean up this huge mess I made with the powdered sugar. I think one of the main reasons I needed to add more of the milk is because half of it, when it <laughs> it's came out of the mixer, ended up on the floor. I'm gonna give it one final mix. And you can see how nice and pliable it is now. Epic fail. My candy was right at 300 degrees and I was like, oh, I need to go check the recipe to see if it was 300 or 310. As I was rereading the recipe, we burnt our sugar. Perfectly golden brown, burnt. I am not giving up. We are gonna pour this out. You cannot save burnt sugar. Burnt sugar tastes terrible. Ugh, I was so close. This is why it's probably best not to be multitasking while working in the kitchen, especially if you're making candy. What I should have done is taped my recipe right here so that it was right next to where I was cooking so I didn't have to go run over to the whole other side of the kitchen to read the recipe because that's what I had to do. I will not let this defeat us. I'm gonna clean this out and we're gonna start over. That was really dumb, don't do that. I just melted my garbage bag and my garbage can. Don't put 300 degree sugar into plastic. We're gonna make this day turn around. So we're just gonna do a one batch recipe. So we have our corn syrup, our honey, our water, our granulated sugar in a five quart stock pot. I'm gonna take out one tablespoon of this baking soda so I don't forget that we only need one tablespoon now, not two. Now I could just as easily have cut that part out and, and not showed you that I burnt the first batch. But that's the reality of cooking in the kitchen is sometimes you burn things and it's totally fine. It's not a failure, it's a learning opportunity. So we're gonna let this now come up to a boil again. Now what I've learned is that as soon as it gets to about 275 degrees, it starts ticking up temperature really quickly. Up until that point, it took about 15 minutes to get, maybe 20 minutes to get to 175 degrees. So I am going to, you can probably tell me I'm crazy and I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to because I have a hard time just sitting and watching at a pot boil. I'm gonna get going on the cookie dough for our soft and chewy cookies. But once it gets to close to temperature, I will stop with the cookies and I will go back and we will watch a pot boil. We have our bowl cleaned out. I'm gonna double this recipe because it's so easy and this is definitely a crowd pleaser. Everybody will like these cookies. And I don't know if everyone is gonna like the other things we're making. So I'm gonna make a double recipe of this. So we're gonna put four sticks of butter into our KitchenAid mixer. Along with two and a half cups of white sugar. We're gonna beat the sugar and flour together for about two minutes until they're light and fluffy. Our sugar and butter 
is nice and fluffy. We're gonna add our eggs. Our sugar on our stove is at 225 degrees. We're gonna add two whole eggs to this. My chickens are laying again, so these are eggs from my chickens, which I'm really happy about. And then we're gonna add two egg yolks. We're gonna mix that together. Now we're gonna add five cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of salt. I just added two teaspoons of baking powder. I'm mixing that in with the flour and the salt. And now we're gonna mix this together. Our sugar on the stove is at 250 degrees. Oh, 250 degrees. I'm gonna slowly mix that in. I'm gonna try to keep as much of the flour in the bowl as possible. And that is it for our cookie dough. So I'm glad I decided to make the cookie dough while our sugar's cooking because I had plenty of time to do that. I'm gonna get our sugar cookie dough in the fridge and I'm gonna let this chill while we wait for our sugar to come to a boil. At this point, because my sugar is at about 260 degrees, I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. I'm not gonna distract myself anymore with making any other recipes. I do need to grab a different dish though to pour our honeycomb in, because this one's gonna be too big. We're gonna replace it with an eight by eight, but I can use the same piece of parchment paper. It's a little big, that's okay. We're going to, I'm going to get this kitchen tidied up. Let me check our sugar. We're almost to 275. Friends, I can't do it. I can't just sit there and watch a pot of candy come up to temperature. So I did take this opportunity just to tidy up just a little bit. I do enjoy being in the kitchen a whole lot more when I clean as I go. So that's what I'm doing. Just putting away the KitchenAid because we won't need that again today and getting those counters wiped up so that we just have a clean working space. Now this candy is up to temperature. We're gonna pour in our baking soda and this is where the magic happens. You wanna work really quick here and you wanna be careful because this is hot. I probably could have put this in that nine by 13 because it is bubbling up like crazy. It will shrink down. I almost burnt it. <laughs> That's why I couldn't stop and talk. Cause I could smell it and I was like, oh, it smells like caramel. And I turned around cause I was wiping the counter down. Oh, I gotta turn the stove off. And it was at the perfect temperature. Mmm. This tastes like my childhood. Every year going to the, it's still sticky. It'll dry and get really crunchy. Mm. Every year we would buy this in the summer for my grandma. It's super rich stuff. You don't need a lot of it. So good. Mm. So sugar is water soluble. This was the pot that we had burnt the sugar in. This was completely covered in sugar and it was stuck to the bottom, but it's almost all dissolved off the bottom. So if you just put your pot in water, then all that sugar will dissolve and it'll be easy to clean. I'm going to set this aside because that needs to completely cool before we can move on to the next step with it. I am so glad I didn't burn that second batch. I did put our peppermint patty in the refrigerator to chill. 
while we were making the other candies. I have a cookie cutter here that's just a round one and I'm going to cut out my patties. I think you get a more uniform shape if you do it this way as opposed to taking the dough and patting them into rounds but you really can do it however you want to do it. You could cut these into heart shapes. I considered that, but I was thinking that when it, go, when it comes to covering them in chocolate, the heart shape would be a little bit more tedious to cover. So I am just gonna do them in rounds. I may have rolled these a little bit on the thin side. They're probably more like an eighth of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch. But they will, I think they'll be just fine. If they stick a little bit, no problem. Just take a butter knife and work it underneath gently. And then I like to flip it over because the top has had time to dry out a little bit. So if you flip it over, the top is dry and it's not going to stick back to the parchment. And it'll allow the bottom part to dry out a little bit. Here are our rounds. I'm gonna go run and throw these in the freezer so they can set up really well before we cover them in chocolate. So I'm gonna take them out to the outside freezer. Before I do that though, I want to get our oven preheated so we can come back in and we can start rolling out and baking our cookies while these are hardening and cooling in the freezer. This right here is gonna make these sugar cookies extra special. I went and purchased some really pretty, simple red sprinkles. Normally these cookies are rolled in just white sugar. And I thought, you know what, let's make this a little bit more festive because these are a sugar cookie that's soft and chewy. And so it's not one that you roll out and decorate. You use a cookie scoop. And one way I thought we could make them extra special would be with this red sugar. I am not a fan of frosting, and so those sugar cookies that have a ton of frosting on the top are just not my thing. But this is something I really enjoy. Now I got two different size sprinkles. I've never done this in sprinkles before. This is a little bit of a bigger sprinkle, and then the other sprinkles that I got that are red are a smaller sprinkle. I'm gonna use my cookie scoop so that I can get even shaped cookies out of here. The nice thing about this recipe is you can also adapt this depending on what holiday. If it's a birthday, you could use the really colorful sprinkles for this. If it's Christmas, you could do half red, half green. I probably would do not mix the colors in one cookie, but half the cookies I would roll in green sugar, half the cookies I would roll in red sugar. If you're doing it for Hanukkah, you could do blue sprinkles. If it's St. Patrick's Day, you could do green and gold. Those are gonna bake for eight to 10 minutes. I used all those other sprinkles I had, so now I'm getting out my smaller ones. I honestly think the smaller ones are gonna have a better texture on the cookie. It'll just be a little less crunch. It'll be more like a regular sugar. But I guess it just depends on what you like. If you like more of a crunchy texture, this bigger sprinkle will be better.
cover up our peppermint patties with chocolate. So I'm going to grab, I guess they're over here, chocolate chips. So you can use whatever kind of chocolate you like for this. If you wanted dark chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, white chocolate, whatever the case. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of coconut oil to our chocolate chips. And I'm gonna melt this easy way. That's gonna be right in the microwave. I'm gonna microwave it for 30 seconds at a time. Stir it, pop it in, 30 seconds, stir it. I'm gonna let, there still be some chunks of chocolate chips, take it out, stir it, and I'm gonna let the residual heat melt the rest of it. I'm just gonna use a fork to stir because I'm gonna use two forks when I dip it and pat the chocolate off and all that type of goodness. So I have a cookie sheet and I put some clean parchment paper on it just because the cookies had left a little bit of oil on the parchment. I didn't want, I don't wanna put my peppermint patties onto oil. The coconut oil helps give this a nice shine because I'm not going to temper this chocolate. I've never attempted to temper chocolate before. And today is not going to be the day I'm going to attempt it. So there's still some lumps in there, but if I keep stirring this, I will have a nice smooth chocolate and all those residual lumps will come right out. Even just like that, that's perfect. So now we're gonna cover our patties, but I did buy some of these really cute Valentine's Day sprinkles. And we're gonna to top our peppermint patties with these just to make them a little bit more festive. These are not frozen anymore. I probably should have waited and I think I'm gonna to have to stick those back in. Yep, I'm gonna to have to stick them back in the freezer. They're a little too soft. My oven is, or my kitchen is a little bit warm. That looks really nice though. How cute. All right, I'm gonna stick these back in the freezer for just a couple minutes and let them harden up again. And then I'll take probably 10 or 15 of the peppermint patties out of the freezer and cover those in chocolate and then keep the rest in the freezer just to keep the ones that I'm not working with nice and cold. All right, we're gonna turn the oven off. These are cooked perfectly. We're gonna let them cool on the cookie sheet and we'll get them off the cookie sheet. I do wanna cover some of this honeycomb or sea foam in chocolate. See how perfect that turned out? I'm glad actually we didn't do a double batch because that's a lot of sea foam. So that, that chocolate that I melted, we're gonna use that to cover some of this in chocolate. So that right there is why it's called honeycomb and or sea foam. So you can eat it just like this, or you can cover it in chocolate. It smells so good. So I don't want sprinkles on the sea foam, so I'm gonna get these sprinkles up. But I'm just gonna use the same parchment since I already have it out with my chocolate. And we'll dip our whole sea foam in there. I'm going to cover half of them and then I'm going to leave the rest of this uncovered and so everyone that I give some to, they'll get some without chocolate and some with chocolate. I prefer it with the chocolate. I think it helps balance the sweetness, but I want people to be able to taste both. 
Honeycomb really is one of the easiest candies to make. It's so easy and so impressive looking. You just have to watch it and not burn it like I did. All right, now I'm going to get some of those peppermint patties covered in chocolate. But first I need to melt some more chocolate because I used it all. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Chocolate with a little bit of coconut oil. nice and cold while we work with them. It's a lot easier to work with them when they're cold because they don't want to bend on you when you tap to get the excess chocolate off. Alrighty, Josh, do you want to try the sea foam or the peppermint patty first? Oh, the peppermint patty. That's what I thought. So look how cute it turned out. He's grabbing my eyes, I can only see one of <laughs> These are now Josh's new favorite candies. Do you want to try the seafoam? I'm going to try the seafoam. The peppermint patty is good. Mmm. <laughs> You've had it before, haven't you? Just like I once. I've ever had like chocolate covered. It's always chocolate covered at the beach. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the humidity um, would make it soggy. That's a good point. I almost forgot about our nugget. So we're gonna get that out of the refrigerator now. I put it in the fridge so that it could firm up so we could cut into it and see how beautiful it turned out. I know that it firmed up nicely for us. It's got a nice firm texture so we should be able to slice into it no problem. Now this stuff is very rich. So you don't need to make very big pieces because it's so rich. Look how cute that is so far. So I'm gonna cut them into pretty small pieces. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. Absolutely love it. We did such a good job, friends, today. How cute. Friends, here we have it. We have our honeycomb, some covered in chocolate, some not. Our nugget turned out so perfect. I love it, along with our peppermint patty. So that's what they look like inside. I'm really happy with the ratio of chocolate to peppermint. And our cookies. Our cookies are probably the ones I'm the least excited about. Normally these are crinkly on the top and I just need to look at what I did with my recipe. They taste good, I had Josh taste one. They're just not the right textures they normally are. But the peppermint patties, the nugget, and our honeycomb are 10 out of 10s. I could not be happier with how today went. I do have quite a few more peppermint patties in the freezer. I have more honeycomb as well and I have more cookies where those come came from. So what I'm gonna do is put the honeycomb in an airtight container, and I'm gonna put the peppermint patties back in the freezer just so they'll stay nice and cold. The nugget's gonna go in an airtight container in the fridge. Cookies are gonna go in an airtight container. Tomorrow I am going to package them up all cute and beautiful, and I am gonna go drop them off at a bunch of different people's houses because there is so much where this came from and I just can't wait to love bomb some of my friends and family. I've got a bunch of different size boxes, so depending on if it's a family I'm dropping it off to or um, just two people in the house, everyone will get a little bit of something, but I can package more up if there's more people in the family, and I'm really, <laughs> I'm just excited to do this. Like I said, I love Valentine's Day. I hope this encouraged you to maybe do a little bit of something on Valentine's Day if it's not something that you typically celebrate. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a romantic love. Even if, you know, 
you think of it as like a Hallmark holiday or a made up holiday, technically all holidays are made up because that's what we like to do as humans. We like to celebrate and it's a good excuse just to do something a little extra special for the ones we love and I just love doing it. So I'm excited to drop these off all around town. If you enjoyed this video, I did do a whole Valentine's Day cookie dedicated video last year and a whole Valentine's Day candy video. Last year we made homemade marshmallows, homemade peanut butter cups, homemade, I don't even know. We did four candies and four cookies, two separate videos, and we had so much fun together. So I can link those videos right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload if you want a little bit more Valentine's Day inspiration. What I am gonna do now is I am going to make dinner. I pulled out some pizza dough and some pre-cooked sausage from the freezer. So even though we spent all day in the kitchen, I can just whip up an easy dinner because I already have pre-shredded cheese in my fridge and I have homemade canned tomato sauce from last year's garden. So thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. Like I said, I greatly appreciate it. And if no one wishes you a happy Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you have a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.